I think I may have invented a new kind of food, but also a new kind of stupid. Congratulations. We'll get back to the stupid part. What I wanted to try is braising a tough cut of meat until buttery soft, chilling it firm, and then searing it. The result is this weird hybrid of a stew and a steak. Dry, crispy crust on the outside, molten beef butter on the inside. And I think it can be prepared safely if you learn from my mistakes. With any braise, a tough and very fatty cut is best, but I think it's particularly true of this dish, which is drier than a big wet stew, so you need that intramuscular fat for texture. This is shoulder, a three pound chuck roast, one of the least expensive cuts of even a very expensive cow. The shoulders of pigs or sheep would work great too. At almost a kilo and a half, this could feed like six people, but I'm cutting it up into only four chunks right now. This is just for easy handling. They'll break apart into even smaller chunks as we braise. What's important is that you cut them into true steaks. That is, the meat fibers are running up and down instead of side to side. This configuration gets you shorter meat fibers that'll be less stringy in the final dish. A coating of oil, and I'm seasoning them very aggressively. These are big chunks of meat, Plus, they're going to share this salt with the braising liquid that I'm going to reduce into a glaze. I'm salting the meat and the sauce right now. I should have put even more salt on. Now, you don't have to brown these first. You could just put them straight into water and simmer them until tender because we're going to sear them at the end. I am also browning them just a little bit right now up front. So I guess they're going to be double seared. If you simmer unbrowned beef for several hours, it kind of makes the whole house smell like those cans of wet dog food. If I just create a little brown flavor now, that smell will be much nicer and maybe it'll infuse some superior flavor into the beef, but this is really optional. You could just simmer them in salty water instead. No oil needed if you don't brown them. I'm intentionally not browning these very thoroughly, A, because it's not necessary, and B, because I don't want the surface to burn later when we sear them again. This is also why I am braising in plain water instead of my signature white wine. Wine has sugar, and I don't want a lot of sugar in the surface of that meat when we sear it later. It would burn. Get that bubbling, reduce it to a simmer, cover, and cook it all damn day. I might flip it around once or twice just to check on it, make sure the liquid hasn't all evaporated. I like the heat barely bubbling. That gets you meat that is still pink on the inside at the end. Now we have plenty of time to think about what we're eating with this extremely rich meat. I'm thinking something green instead of something starchy. I had been a good boy for a while, but in the chaos of moving to the new place, I really fell off the wagon in terms of healthy eating and exercise. Hence, Noom, the sponsor of this video. Let me thank them. Noom is a health program created by behavioral psychologists. I've said a million times that a million ways of eating and exercising can be great for you. The trick is tricking yourself into actually doing it. I tell Noom that I'm trying to be a little leaner and stronger. They help me put numbers and dates on my goals. And then they teach me the psychology of how such goals are achieved. You can read or listen like podcasts. Start eating less dense. Feeling full on fewer calories. For me, this isn't really about learning nutrition. It's about having a thing on my phone that's going to keep pinging me, making sure I'm doing what I know needs to be done. See, this beef dinner is going to be most of my calorie budget for the day to meet my goal. That's fine. I just need to keep it in mind and plan accordingly. Noom helps. Hit my link in the description to get started with a free health evaluation. Start your Noom program today with my link in the description. Thank you, Noom. Now, I'm going to have this beef with some quick pickled vegetables. I want rounds of shallot instead of strips, so shallow cut across the outer layer, peel it off, and then slice right through. You can do carrots, all kinds of veggies. I'm doing some jalapenos, really nice thin rounds that'll pickle really fast. I'm leaving the ribs in there because I want a little heat, but you can take them out. Dump all that in a bowl and then just cover with any vinegar. I'm using red wine vinegar today, and it doesn't have to fully submerge everything now because the veggies are going to release a ton of their own liquid, and because these are just quick refrigerator pickles. I'm not actually actually trying to safely preserve these for long-term storage. They'll last a week in the fridge. And I want sweet pickles, so I'm dumping in a handful of sugar. That'll be distributed across a lot of portions. You could bring this to a boil really quick. People do that, but I prefer the fresher texture you get by just covering these and throwing them in the fridge raw. The sugar will dissolve in time. As little as a half hour in there will make those veggies taste really good, but longer is better. So here's the meat after like five hours. If I poke it, I can see that it's just barely holding itself together which is how I want it. I want meat jelly. I'll pull these out very carefully with a slotted spoon to drain them. I wish I had set them onto a paper towel at this stage to dry the bottoms even more. That's the first stupid mistake I made that led to... 
It's a pretty common East Asian thing to cook a duck or something really soft in liquid and then chuck it in a deep fryer to crisp up. That works great because soft things can survive in a huge volume of oil. In contrast, if we tried to sear these in just a film of oil right now, they'd break apart. They're too delicate for that. So instead, I'm going to reduce my braising liquid a little bit and then dump it into a jug. I'll stop right before all those bits go in. Don't boil it down too much before you do this. If it's too viscous, the fat won't be able to separate out cleanly, and I want to get it out. All of my goals will be achieved if I just cover the liquid and the meat and throw it in the fridge for a few hours to firm up solid. You could do all of these steps the day before you want to eat, or first thing the morning of. Here we are a few hours later, and I have a solid fat puck that I can just lift out. I was thinking I might sear the beef right in its own fat there, so I figured I'd scrape the bottom off. Any water or meat bits sticking to the fat will spit a lot as the fat heats to searing temperature. I did not scrape it nearly thoroughly enough. That's stupid mistake number two that I made. Into a smaller pan, I'll pour my defatted broth. It's literally gelatinous because the connective tissue in that tough shoulder meat dissolved from collagen into gelatin as we braised. That's why tough cuts are good for braising. That's going to be lip-smacking texture as we reduce this to a glaze. A glaze generally needs some sweet and sour, and hey, we have both right here. Pour in a bunch of that sweet pickle juice, bring to a boil, and reduce. Hopefully yours reduces faster than mine. My new kitchen has a gas stove top, which I'm not used to, and I'm having trouble getting enough power out of it. But once it gets to about that thick, you got to start stirring it just to keep the sugar from sticking to the bottom and burning. If we hadn't taken the fat out of this, there would be an oil slick on top right now. Glazes are terrible at holding fat inside themselves. Keep in mind, this is going to thicken a lot as it cools, so I think that's done. Another thing to do with that sweet pickle juice is make a vinaigrette for our side salad. Throw in some mustard for its emulsifying power, and then as much olive oil as you want. I usually like equal parts oil and vinegar, which is pretty acidic, but you know me. Give that a taste. Beautiful dressing. Finally, time to sear the beef. So I'll melt that fat down over highish heat and yikes. All that moisture that was clinging to the puck of fat is now escaping as steam and exploding, sending hot oil all over. The pan is spitting, as they say. Hmm. Well, I've never been afraid of a little cleanup after dinner, so time to sear those cold beef chunks in their own fat. Remember how I said I wish I'd dried the bottom of the pieces on a paper towel? The moisture under there rapidly expanded and sent fat exploding everywhere. On an electric stove like I'm used to, that usually just makes a mess. On a gas stove, spitting oil is liable to ignite on the open flame, and that's exactly what happened. Not my smartest moment. So. Let's try this again in good old olive oil. You need a thick coating because the meat is cold and rigid and not going to conform immediately to the pan surface. The oil needs to come up to meet the meat where it is. Moderate heat is good here. That reduces spitting, and I don't want the crust to burn before the inside of the meat has had a chance to warm up. Remember, it's cold. At the same time, I want to flip these while they're still firm enough to withstand the trauma. When they have a beautiful golden crust on all sides and they feel soft in the middle again, it's time to eat. On goes some salad greens that I just tossed in our dressing, some pickles, the acidity of which will cut the richness of this meat. If you top with glaze like I'm doing here, you'll want to wait until the last second. For guests, I would serve it on the side in a little cup. I went through a lot of extra work to make sure this has a dry, steak-like crust on it, and if it sits in that glaze for too long, you'll lose that texture contrast. I love the contrast of the super-rich meat with the bright, crisp salad and pickles. My recipe in the description includes the steps that would prevent any pyrotechnics like you witnessed. Step one being don't be an idiot like me. I'll get used to that gas stove one of these days, I'm sure. But hey, it's a good reminder why we always have a fire extinguisher in the kitchen. We all have stupid moments, so we got to be smart in advance of them.